So, for example, I give you, and, and this is the cool thing to think about. Here is first, let's think about how we represent flow and energy in a string. Because if we use total head, here I am at, darn it, there it is. Here I am um, in a stream, and like those rapids, and um, I've got my surface of, well, actually, in my surface of my water is here, and I'm not going to make it rapids yet. Nice smooth stream. I go downstream, and the water is at a lower elevation, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so rivers flow downstream. So the surface of the water goes down. Um, here's the bottom of my stream. And so here is my depth. And in fact, why don't we do this as a simple equation? So um, let's pretend this is my stream is three meters deep, and it's flowing at two meters a second. First, what's the Bernoulli, what's the Bernoulli equation energy in the stream? Rho hg. What, what, what's the number of the energy in that stream? Everybody get an answer? Hopefully. Mm -hmm. What? 8,000? Eight, I don't think so. Yeah, I got 31,400. <laughs> I, got, I got 30, but I'll go with 31 because I was just doing it around that 31,400. So um, you have, so rho. G is 9,800, right? Mm -hmm. Times 3 is 20 or 30, is it 30? 29,400. 20, oh, you guys got it wrong. Mm -hmm. It is 30,400. So it's 29, so 3 times 9,800, rho G times 3 is. 29,400, and velocity is 2, squared is 4, divided by 2 is 2, right? Oh, you're right, it is. Times 1,000, mm -hmm. so it is 31,400. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have 2,000 of the energy in velocity as kinetic energy, and 2,000 of the energy, or 29,000 of the energy stored as depth. So is this super critical or subcritical? Big super time critical. subcritical. Yeah. So now, let's do that in terms of head and do the same equation or the same calculation, except now we use the total head equation. You guys remember it off the bat? And we're back up to it. Okay. <coughs> so in the numbers are a lot easier to deal with here, right? 
Okay, so h is 3, u squared is 4, 2, divided by 9.8 is 0.5 something. 90.8, where's that going? Gravity. going to be 3, which is the water depth, plus 2 divided by 9.8, one quarter, one fifth. So about, since I don't have a calculator handy, 3.2, right? So we can look at our stream. Okay, there's the water depth. We can actually make a point up here. If that's 1, 2, 3 meters high, and there's 4, could actually go up here about a fifth up. And that would represent, that dashed line there would represent the energy in the stream. It's a little above the water depth because it's got that extra energy from the velocity of the flow. And the higher the velocity, the higher <coughs> that dashed line would be above the water. Because remember, with head, we're representing the energy as depth. So we, uh, we just add a little more for velocity, and it actually shows us visually what's the energy in the stream. Any problems with that? Everybody cool? OK, so on this equation, with steady, uniform, subcritical flow, we could actually just draw a nice line right over the water showing how the energy, the, we're losing energy because the water's gradually losing energy as it flows down to the sea. And the energy on top, and, and so that loss in energy is represented by that there, that change in energy as you go downstream. So a log in the middle of that would cause a hydraulic yeah, jump. Well, it might. Right? It depends as on well how as we do it. I, I have a lot of different problems like this. But yeah, let's do. Uh, let's start. Let's do first. What I usually do is pick subcritical or supercritical flow. And let's start with subcritical flow. Nah, let's start with supercritical flow. It's flowing. It's uh, we got a really fast stream here. So there's my energy in the flow. It's a lot more, doesn't matter exactly what it is because we're not doing it. What happens when I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna erase this, I'm gonna put my diagram of change in energy with depth. So there's depth and there's energy. So what happens when our stream hits my toxic waste barrel in the stream? or my log, or whatever it is. What, what happens to the energy of the stream when it hits this? Is it going to, it's, right now, it's losing energy slowly, right? Because it's a nice smooth bottom. What happens when it hits here? It's going to lose energy faster. I mean, you've got this big log right in front of you. It's got to go up and over it, so it's going to lose energy faster, right? So it's got to go up and over the log. And actually, ha, and I have to draw it. See, one thing, see how I would have drawn it? I would have had to have done that. What's wrong with that? It's in the water. Where's that extra energy coming from? This line, the energy line, is never going to go up. You're never adding energy to the stream. Total energy is always going to be decreasing. You're always flowing downhill to the sea. So I should have drawn my energy way up here. So that as it got here, it could decrease faster as it goes across the log. Probably ought to have it decrease faster all the way across the log. 
Does that make sense? So what happens, so I'm in supercritical flow. Where is supercritical flow in this diagram? Where it's thin, right? So H is small. So what happens is to my water jet as I lose energy? It increases, right? So what happens to, here I'm going to draw it a little smaller. What happens to my water depth as I go up over this log? It's got to increase more. Even if it's not doing a hydraulic jump. And then it, as it comes back down, it can accelerate again. And we don't lose energy as fast. And so it gets smaller. So as you lose, as a, as a, a supercritical stream loses energy, it slows down and it gets deeper. So imagine, and the easy way to imagine that is imagine this water shooting along. It hits this. It slows down. It's got to go up over this big thing, right? The same amount of water going here is now going here at a slower velocity, right? And it's the same amount of water, so it has to be deeper. Otherwise, it would just keep piling up right here, right? Mm -hmm. And if we're keeping a constant flow, then as you go over an obstacle, the stream has to get deeper while it's losing, while it's slowing down. And then as it gets faster again, it can get thinner. Okay. Everybody got that? I'm not seeing lots of nods and yeses. I need some response, guys. Yes. Oh, yeah, good. Good. Any problems? Good. All right, now, so this is actually the obvious thing, right? You're blocking it, it's got to stop, it piles up to get over. What happens now if we are in subcritical flow? This is my log in the stream problem. What happens as to the energy, I better make it a little higher, what happens to the energy as I go over this log? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it decreases faster again, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody said nothing, but it does decrease faster because it's still an obstacle down here. This water still has to go up and over. It's still, a, it's still an obstacle to the flow, even if it isn't blocking the entire flow. Uh, imagine a big, huge rock in the stream or a, a sand dune piled up in the bottom of the stream. And so it's gonna, the energy profile is gonna be the same, pretty much. It's still being obstructed, it's still losing energy. The difference is, is in how the stream responds. So I've got an obstacle in my way. If I am a subcritical flow, how does subcritical flow respond to losing energy? What happens to water depth? Decreases. It decreases. And so subcritical flow actually decreases over the obstacle and then increases again on the other side. No. <laughs> the other thing subcritical flow does is it's is because there's an obstacle here, imagine a partial dam. I've got a river flowing along, and I pile up a whole bunch of rocks in, in the middle of the stream, throw a, a whole truck full of toxic waste into the middle of my stream. All these big barrels are in the way. It sort of blocks the river, right? It needs to expend energy to get through there. And so what the stream actually does is it backs up behind it. It's like having a little dam. So the water piles up behind the obstacle. To build its energy? And it'll build up extra energy behind and then lose that to go through so that the water surface will actually change to look like that. 
And this, this piling up of water behind the obstacle is called backwater. And this is why streams flood. You never want to live just upstream from where a bridge crosses a river. Because what causes most flooding is you have a big flood in your river, and some trees get ripped out, and cars fall into the river, and they come down, and they hit the bridge, and stop, and they make a big obstacle. And the water goes through it and rips at the bridge, but it also backs up behind the bridge. And so that backwater, that adding of water upstream from obstacles during a flood is what causes most flooding. So the water piles up on the river, gets up, overtops the levee, and all of a sudden you've got a flooded house. So a subcritical stream adds water depth upstream of the flow, and then it actually decreases and gets lowest as it's going across the obstacle, and then returns to a higher water depth as after it goes across the obstacle. And so the velocity here is slow, faster, and then slower again. I'll, I'll make that more dramatic. And so it goes fast through here because it's thinner. It goes really slow up here because we've added a lot of water depth and made it deeper. So it's even slower. And then it's back to normal flow here. So slower. <coughs> This is not very intuitive, <coughs> is it, to have the water actually accelerating over an obstacle. But it's fundamental to how streams work. Because now, imagine this stream is a dune in the bottom of the stream. The higher <coughs> the dune builds, the more of an obstacle it makes which means the faster the water goes across the top, which means that you erode the top of the dune more. In other words, there's a balance between the depth of the water in any stream and the size of the bed forms within. Because as those bed forms in subcritical flow, as those bed forms get taller and taller, the water goes faster and faster, which makes them get smaller and move faster. Okay? Supercritical flow is the exact opposite. Supercritical flow, you have a dune, and the water goes up and slows up over the dune, so any sand it's carrying gets dropped. And that makes the water go even slower. So it goes higher. And any sand the water is carrying gets dropped. So that slows the water even more. So any sand the water is carrying gets dropped. So these anti-dunes, which are what form in, which we'll learn about in a little bit, form in supercritical flow, keep getting higher and higher and higher until they create a hydraulic jump. And then they wash out. Poof, you get this huge catastrophic kaboof, and it all washes away. So, bed forms are not stable in supercritical flow, they are stable in subcritical flow. Okay, questions? Yes. <coughs> <coughs> 